Hello, my name is Randy Kelly. Uh, I have been, I guess you could say, a independent, low-budget filmmaker uh, for the last 10 years or so. I mostly made films uh, on a volunteer basis uh, on YouTube and Vimeo and places like that. Um, but recent years have kind of changed a few things and, and uh, felt it was time that maybe I start uh, talking about things that are outside of film. Uh, that pertain to life and uh, and so it was necessary for me to uh, make a brand new channel because um, I can't really put some of these things on the filmmaking channel because it doesn't necessarily uh, work for that or pertain to that so I hope uh, there'll be more of these videos uh, this could be the only one who knows uh, but we'll see uh, so welcome to uh, my brand new channel called Rec Thoughts So, I probably should get one thing out of the way real quick like before I get started, and that is the fact that I am filming this in my cabin slash shed, which is in my backyard, um, and I live in uh, a small town where there are trains, a freeway nearby, and a refinery, so you may hear some noises. So, I apologize ahead of time uh, for anything you might hear in the background. So, with all that out of the way, I guess uh, I should get to it. The, I think the... The purpose of this channel is going to be to talk about things um, that could fall in the realm of either it could be political, it could be philosophical, it could be religious, it could be a number of things. Basically, it's just a, a place for me to express thoughts when I have them. So I don't know how often I'll do these. I might do them once a week. I might do them once a month. I'm not sure yet. We'll have to see how things go. Life gets kind of busy. But since this is my first one, I think uh, it might be important to uh, maybe go over my story as to what brought me here. And I won't, I won't go over my life story necessarily, but just basically why um, I'm kind of breaking my normal uh, filmmaking stuff uh, to talk about more personal stuff and life stuff here. Um, I guess you could say I went through a awakening, um, it, and it started about in 2017. Um, oddly enough, um, what kind of woke me up to what was going on in the world, um, came from film. Um, uh, I've been, I've been, uh, really into film for most of my life since I was a kid. Wanted to be a filmmaker, wanted to go to Hollywood. Uh, at one point I wanted to be a stuntman for various reasons over the years, between ambition and life, this way things was, I never went that far. I also kind of realized that I probably wouldn't fit in in Hollywood. Uh, I think I always knew that. Um, but I always wanted to make films anyway, so I always did stuff here in Montana. And hopefully I still get to. Um, so it's kind of funny with the love of film that I've had over my entire life, it's kind of ironic in a way that film is what woke me up to the realities of what's happening in the world. Um, and how that happened was through messaging. Because uh, films since, uh, I think since the time they, they started, have always had some kind of messaging to them. Some more than others. Uh, a filmmaker wants to say something, obviously. Uh, in many cases, they've been used for propaganda uh, since World War II. Um, and I won't get into a lot of details as to what films or that necessarily uh, have had that over the years, other than I will say the interesting, interestingly enough, um, the thing that got my eyes kind of looking at this a little more was a TV series called Supergirl. And the first season when I watched that, um, my whole family, we kind of got into it. It was just kind of a good family fun. But by the second season, started noticing there was um, an obvious shift in the overall uh, messaging of the characters. I started noticing characters doing things that didn't seem right. Uh, for example, um, Supergirl's uh, human sister, basically adoptive sister, I guess you could say, um, she all of a sudden decided she was not straight, we'll just say that. And it always felt off. 
like it didn't feel right. And I could just tell that it was like, okay, here we go again. We're just pushing this agenda. Because the character, it didn't happen in a way that, I, I don't know, I didn't feel was very natural or, or, or in line with the character. And so it kind of became very obvious that uh, it was a writer's intention or a, I don't know, whoever uh, behind the scenes of that series decided that that was the message they wanted to convey. But it, it, it wasn't true to the character. And I, I think that was, like I said, somewhere around 2017, uh, kind of started noticing that. And about the same time, in that, in that same year, I made a, a, my first Survivor's film. Uh, which I'm going to come back to because there's some significance in that that later on I didn't realize was going to happen. But after seeing some of these things in Supergirl, it kind of cracked the shell for me. And I started paying attention to a lot of other things that I was watching and noticing a lot of the same messaging when I'd see a character go off and say something or do something that didn't fit the character. It was quite obvious that it was just writers wanting to say something but not the character, but they were using the character to do it. That practice was how I got woke up to the culture war, which I didn't know was a thing. I didn't even know the terminology of the culture war uh, back then. And then at the end of 2017, that's when Last Jedi came out. Um, and at first I, I liked Last Jedi. And then I had a, uh, a friend of mine at the time hated it and he didn't know why he hated it but it took him a while to figure out why he hated it and over time through conversations with him i started seeing things like oh yeah you're right i'm seeing things in that movie that's uh obviously a messaging thing and it has nothing to do with the characters and it really really turned me off and you know to to movies but it turned me on to what was going on you know it 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 woke me up to what was going on, I guess you could say. And from there, I started paying a lot more attention. And that led me to watching a lot of political pundits, um, you, uh, Ben Shapiro, Stephen Crowder, Tim Poole, um, a lot of these kinds of people, Joe Rogan, uh, Glenn Beck. Um, and I started paying attention a lot more to... Um, what was going on out in the world. And of course you had Trump, uh, which was quite a slap in the face to uh, America in a lot of ways uh, for obvious reasons. Um, so over time, you know, I really woke up to a lot of stuff. And, and, and what I discovered was even though my entryway into this was just a crack in the shell of seeing the culture war, once I saw that, I started realizing it went deeper. And there were things that were put in film, uh, in our media, uh, just all over. Things that I thought were fiction uh, turned out to be reality. Um, and that was difficult to really digest. Fast forward to now. And what that translates to is knowing that so much of what I believe to be true um, either ends up not being true or things that I thought were fantasy are possibly true. Um, and it was amplified uh, tenfold for not just me, but a lot of people in 2020 for obvious reasons with the whole... Uh, C1 Niner, we'll say, um, that really accelerated so much stuff, obviously. And so, let me come back to why The First Survivors is now so significant to me, uh, that film that I mentioned a little while ago that I did in 2017. In that film, I depicted um, a world where America had split. On one side you had 
the civilized world where people were living in a gated cities uh, under an authoritarian rule um, where their lives are dictated to them. Um, the president is assassinated uh, in that uh, radio broadcast of that film. And then outside of the cities, you have people trying to survive, which is where I focused most of my storytelling uh, was in the desert setting with the outcasts. Now in 2021, you can start to see where it's kind of a wake-up call again for me. It's like we feel like we're getting there, don't we? It really feels like this stupid little film that I made and obviously influenced by things like Mad Max and a lot of other dystopian stuff. It seems like it's becoming a reality because now we obviously are really into othering each other, uh, putting uh, people in this other camp and separating, uh, you know, vaxxed, unvaxxed, uh, you know, uh, right, left, Christian, non-Christian, you know, whatever. Uh, it's and it's really quite stupid. So. I guess all this to say is that I'm awake and I'm paying attention. And it's kind of ironic in a way, even that terminology, uh, because you had what was called the woke crowd. And through all this, what I've realized is that the woke crowd, they're the ones that are actually asleep. They don't realize that they've had the wool pulled out of their, over their eyes and that they've been indoctrinated into a, I guess, a, a, a fantasy world, you could say. Uh, they, they think things are going to happen that are not through this kind of utopia they want to reach. Um, and that, that ideology has obviously been a cancer of our society. Um, so it's just kind of funny that they call themselves woke when the reality is they're not. It's people like us who are awake. I've heard it said many times, a veil is being lifted. And that's a good way to put it. Uh, the Bible speaks of a veil being lifted. Um, and you talk to a lot of people on the street and they can feel it. It's as if, uh, I, I kind of equate it to uh, the never ending story. I'm almost 50 years old, so I'm referring to something pretty old here. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look it up. It's a classic uh, uh, fantasy film of the 80s. But in that, in that film, there was this thing called the nothing that was coming. And the nothing was going to destroy everything. And there was an ominous feel to that. And now, it seems quite obvious that there is that feel of the proverbial nothing coming. And it's, it's hard to describe, other than, I guess you call it the nothing because we don't know what it is completely. But you can feel it. So those of us who are awake are the ones that can really articulate that, I guess. We're the ones that are actually woke or awoken, possibly. So, I don't know, that's just kind of my introduction to, uh, you know, what I'm going to be doing here. Uh, I think that'll probably be the longest one that I've done, this intro. Uh, I think other videos might be a lot shorter and it could be just random thoughts that I'll, I'll have of that day. Um, we'll see what happens, uh, but hopefully I won't keep you as long next time. In the meantime, God bless.